weather vanes typically are politicians, where whatever way the wind's blowing, whatever the mood of the moment is, whatever the polls say, they spin that direction. Leaders are lighthouses. There's a consistency to them. There's a strength to them. You know, lighthouses are only needed when the weather's stormy. And it's beautiful, they're just a pretty building. But when the seas are stormy and it's dark and rainy and foggy, that's when you need a lighthouse. A leader has to be a rock, someone of consistency, that when the storms, whether it's in business, what the economy, whatever's happening to the organization that you're over, that you're a human Alka-Seltzer, you calm the organization. I, you know, I've worked for people that were quote-unquote leaders who, you know, would bring a bucket of gas to a fire and make it, you know, just turn it into a blaze by how they reacted to it. Great leaders are calmers. Great leaders are people that when maybe everything is hectic and chaotic, but when people see them, hear from them, they're calmer. I believe a peaceful mind generates power. That if you've got a bunch of, you know, I've worked for people before, back when I was younger, you know, younger that, um, you know, when the person got to the office, the leader got to the office, everybody's running around going, what kind of mood is he in? What kind of mood is he in? The organization can't run on the, whether you had a fight with your wife that morning, okay? You've got to have a consistency and a strength to you. That's what I mean by being a lighthouse. I mean, a leader has to be a thermostat, not a thermometer, okay? You know, bosses measure things. What's productivity, how many sales, whatever. A leader has to be in touch with the fiber of the organization. And when things are tough, when people are down, You've got to be, you've got to figure, you know, I, 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 story from my career, people would come to me and go, oh my God, John, we have a crisis. And I would always say, you know, as a result of what happened, how many people are dead? In my business career, thank God, the answer was always none. And so a crisis involves dead people, okay? A situation involves something that went wrong in business. <laughs> A leader has to understand where the team is, where their thoughts are. So you've got to inspire. I mean, get people to laugh. I used to, I mean, I, when I knew things were tough, you know, I've always had a pretty good wit to me and stuff like that. I'd show up and tell a joke, laugh, get everybody to laugh, lighten up. You know, it's, you know, it's not like, I, I always said, you know, our company sells insurance, okay? We're not the, you know, the critical care ward of a hospital. You want to see pressure? Go watch a trauma surgeon. Okay, that's pressure. You know, and, and a lot of people adapt to pressure differently. You know, Peyton Manning, who just retired, one of the, I heard him speak one time, and a great quote, quote he had was, pressure is a privilege. I mean, you know, I'm sure he's going to miss it now. Okay, pressure is a privilege. You, you know, you, you lighten up, enjoy it, enjoy the journey. It goes by very fast. So I think a leader has to know what the mood of the team is. And when people get too wound up, too tight, too tense, you know, people have told me in the past, you know, John, I'm just intense. No, usually that means you're just tense, okay? That, you know, the leader lightens up the team and, and gets the team to perform. I believe when you're loose, you perform better. When you're scared to death or fearful, usually you don't perform well. So that's what I think a leader needs to do.